Did you know that although he is a prominent god, Hades is not usually considered one of the Twelve Olympians? Hello and welcome to World History Encyclopedia. My name is Kelly and today we're going to explore the most important gods from ancient Greece, which are known as the Twelve Olympians. Don't forget, the easiest way to support us is by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out on any new uploads. If you like my t-shirt, you can find this design and a bunch more on our shop, which I will link down below. The Twelve Olympians were the twelve most important gods in ancient Greece, and were so called because it was believed that they dwelt on Mount Olympus in northern Greece. They presided over every facet of human life, and although they were gods, they fought and argued, had love affairs, and were capable of great kindness and giving out terrible punishments. They had very human qualities, as well as representing important ideals and features of the human condition, such as justice, loyalty, wisdom, beautiful music, as well as explaining natural phenomena, such as the changing of the seasons, suffering and death. These gods were Zeus, Poseidon, Hera, Apollo, Artemis, Aphrodite, Ares, Hermes, Dionysus, Athena, Hephaestus and Demeter. Sometimes Hestia is depicted as one of the Twelve instead of Dionysus. Hades was not considered one of the Twelve Olympians, due to his dwelling in the underworld. Much of what we know about the origins of the Greek gods is through the epic poems of Homer, the Iliad and the Odyssey, and Hesiod's Theogony, which details the origins of the gods. These gods were all one big family, and trust me, it was messy, incestuous, and confusing to follow, especially since there are often different versions of myths regarding who gave birth to whom and who did what. But despite this, let's give it a go. So we're going to stick close to our 12 Olympians, but remember, the family tree of the Greek gods is huge. This is just a small part of it. According to Hesiod in his Theogony, the primordial gods Uranus the heavens and Gaia the earth had 12 children, known as the Titans. Two of these Titans, Cronus and Rhea, gave birth to Hestia, Poseidon, Zeus, Hades, Hera and Demeter. Zeus and Hera got married and gave birth to Ares. On her own, Hera gave birth to Hephaestus, and on his own, Athena sprung from the head of Zeus. Zeus, with Semele, gave birth to Dionysus. Two more of the Titans, Phoebe and Coas, gave birth to Leto, and Leto, with Zeus, gave birth to the twins Apollo and Artemis. You've also got the Titan Iapetus, who, with either Clymene or Themis, had three of the Titans, Prometheus, Atlas, and Epimetheus. You might have noticed by now that Zeus wasn't very faithful to his wife Hera. Well, with Maia, one of the so-called Pleiades, he fathered yet another one of the Twelve Olympians, Hermes, the messenger god. Last but not least, Aphrodite was written in the Iliad as the child of Zeus and Dion, the daughter of Oceanus and Tethys. But in the Theogony, she was born from sea foam created by Uranus' genitals, which were cut off and thrown into the sea. Fun stuff. So now that we have a general idea of how each of the 12 Olympians fit in the family tree, it's time to introduce them. Let's start off with Zeus, the king of the gods and supreme deity of the Olympians. Zeus was the god of the skies and thunder, and was often depicted holding a lightning bolt. Zeus's father, Kronos, usurped his father, Uranus, and fearing his own children would do that when Rhea gave birth to them, Kronos promptly swallowed them. Good parenting. Rhea saved their youngest child, Zeus, and sent him away to be raised on Mount Dicte in Crete. Once Zeus had grown, he made his father cough up his siblings, who were all still alive since they were immortal. Zeus then married his sister, Hera, and then battled the Titans for control of the world for 10 years in a war known as the Titanomachy. He was finally successful and locked up the Titans in Tartarus, the deepest part of the underworld. Zeus is well known for his many, many affairs, which often involved transforming himself into animals and resulted in many offspring. 
He was known as the Punisher, with one of the most iconic examples of his retribution being Prometheus, who stole fire from the gods and gave it to humanity, whom he bound to a rock and had his liver eaten by an eagle every day, and then overnight it would regrow to be eaten again. Even so, Zeus was also known as the Peacemaker, such as when he reconciled Hermes and Apollo over the incident of the stolen cows. If you want to know more about this particular tale, head over to our video on Hermes. Hera was the queen of the gods and both the wife and sister to Zeus. She was the ideal representation of a woman and was the goddess of marriage and family. However, she is best known for her jealous and vengeful nature, which was often aimed at the objects of her husband's many affairs. It seems as though Hera was in constant battle with Zeus's lovers, and many of the surviving stories depict harsh revenge and punishments. Hera punished Leto, mother of Apollo and Artemis, by promising to curse any land that gave the pregnant goddess refuge. And even after she found sanctuary on Delos, Hera cursed her to nine months of labor. Semele, mother of Dionysus, was tricked by Hera into asking to see Zeus in all his divine splendor, which promptly destroyed her. One of the people most often plagued by Hera's wrath was Heracles, better known as Hercules, the son of Alcmene and Zeus, who was struck by Hera with madness, which caused him to kill his children and wife, Megara. If you want to hear more about how Hera terrorized Hercules, hit the link in the top corner to our video all about the myth and legend of Hercules. The god Poseidon was one of Zeus's brothers and after their defeat of the Titans was given dominion over the sea. Poseidon was the creator of storms and the bringer of earthquakes and destruction. He was the patron of horses and horse breeding and a protector of sailors. Poseidon is a god with one of the longest histories as his name is found in Mycenaean Linear B inscriptions from Pelos and Knossos, which date between the 15th and 12th centuries BCE. Poseidon dwelled in magnificent mansions beneath the sea with his Nereid, also known as sea nymph, wife, Amphitrite. Their most famous son was Triton, who was half man and half fish. However, much like his brother, Poseidon had many affairs, which resulted in a number of offspring, which included the hero Theseus, Polyphemus the Cyclops, who is well known from the Odyssey, Orion the Hunter, Pegasus the Flying Horse, the Wild Horse Arion, and Charybdis, the ship-eating sea monster, which created terrible whirlpools. Poseidon was also responsible for the birth of the Minotaur, as he cursed Pasiphae, the wife of Minos, the king of Crete, to fall in love with the bull which Minos failed to sacrifice to him. If you want to know more about the Minotaur, check out our video all about the Minoans on Crete. Demeter is another Greek deity with a long history and was the goddess of fertility of the earth and vegetation. Just one example of her fertility is that through the mating of Poseidon and Demeter in the form of horses, the wild horse Arion was born. Demeter is best known, however, as the mother of Persephone by Zeus. Persephone was the goddess of grain and agriculture, and the mother-daughter duo played the central role in the religious ritual of the Eleusinian Mysteries, which took place at the sanctuary dedicated to Demeter at Eleusis. The rituals enacted at Eleusis enlightened participants to the ultimate meaning of life, removed their fear of death, and promised adherents eternal life after death. It was from this mystery cult that the concept of Demeter protecting her worshippers in the afterlife developed, and subsequently spread throughout the Greek world. Our next god is probably the most unlikable of the Olympians, due to his aggressive nature and love of conflict, Ares, god of war. Ares was the son of Zeus and Hera, and it is believed that due to his courage and beauty, he was successful in his attempts to seduce Aphrodite, even though she was married to Hephaestus. Although Ares and Aphrodite had a daughter, Harmonia, and a son, Eros, who was the god of love and desire, Ares was often depicted with his other children, Phobos, Phia, and Deimos, Terra, 
along with his sister Eris, Strife, and his charioteer Enyo. Although he loved to start fights and encourage wars, he himself sought to avoid pain and cried when he was wounded. If Ares represented the brutal carnage of war, Athena was the strategy in the brains. As the goddess of wisdom, war, and the crafts, it isn't surprising that Athena was Zeus's favourite daughter, and perhaps the wisest, most courageous, and resourceful of the Olympians. The birth of Athena is truly unique. Zeus was told that his son by the woman Metis would usurp his throne, so whilst Metis was pregnant, he swallowed her, and Athena was born from his head, fully grown and clothed in armour. Athena is closely associated with the city of Athens, which is named after the goddess. Both Athena and Poseidon wished to be the patron god of the city, and so they had a contest in which they would produce a gift for the people, and based on these gifts, one would be chosen. Poseidon produced a saltwater spring, but Athena was victorious after she produced the olive tree, which became a symbol of peace and plenty. In her honour, the Parthenon was constructed in the 5th century BCE on the Acropolis. The Parthenon is named after the virginal aspect of Athena, Athena Parthenos, and is still the focal point of modern Athens. In response to the birth of Athena single-handedly by Zeus, Hera gave birth to Hephaestus alone. However, when she saw that he was ugly, she threw him off Mount Olympus and he became lame when he crashed into the earth. Hephaestus was the god of metallurgy, fire, and crafts, and was the blacksmith to the gods, who had his workshop beneath volcanoes. Hephaestus married the goddess Aphrodite, which may sound like an unusual pairing. This marriage came to pass after Hephaestus captured his mother in invisible bonds on a throne he built, and the terms of her release was for Aphrodite's hand in marriage. Aphrodite, however, had many affairs, and many of these were with Ares, whom Hephaestus caught red-handed. Hephaestus captured Aphrodite and Ares with an invisible net of chains around his bed, and the other Olympians were called to see the spectacle. Hephaestus was an ingenious craftsman and worked with the Cyclops, which were giant one-eyed men, in his workshops. He was credited with making the scepter and Aegis of Zeus, the helmet of Hermes, the secret locking doors for Hera's chambers, and even the lovely first woman, Pandora, whom he sculpted out of clay. Apollo was arguably one of the most popular Greek gods, who was associated with the bow, music, the sun, and divination. He was the twin brother of Artemis, and was the father of the great musician Orpheus, who inherited his father's musical skills with the lyre and Kythera, and the healer Asclepius, who received Apollo's knowledge of medicine and healing. Apollo was a central figure in Homer's Iliad, and was on the side of the Trojans. He saved the lives of the Trojan heroes Hector, Aeneas, and Glaucus, and was the god who sent the plague to the camp of the Achaeans, and was responsible for leading Paris' arrow to the heel of Achilles. He was often associated with and depicted holding a bow, which was made for him by Hephaestus, along with the lyre which he received in trade from his half-brother Hermes. Artemis was the twin sister of Apollo, and was the goddess of wild nature, the hunt, and chastity. Where her brother was associated with the sun, Artemis was associated with the moon. Artemis was the patron deity of girls and young women, and was the protectress during childbirth. The temple of Artemis at Ephesus was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and the most important cult site for the goddess. Although she healed the wounded Aeneas during the Trojan War, and saved the daughter of Agamemnon, Iphigenia, from being sacrificed on their way to Troy, Artemis is often portrayed in a far less charitable light. She killed the hunter Orion after his attempted rape of either her or one of her followers, and turned one of her followers, Callisto, into a bear after she lay with Zeus. Aphrodite was the goddess of love, beauty, desire, and all aspects of sexuality, and the wife of the god Hephaestus. 
Aphrodite had a very unique birth. Cronos castrated his father Uranus and threw his genitals into the sea, and from the foam, Aphrodite appeared. Although she was married to Hephaestus, Aphrodite had many affairs, most notably with Ares, Hermes, and Dionysus. One of Aphrodite's most famous affairs was with the handsome Adonis, whom she kept safe in a chest and had Persephone guard. But Persephone fell in love with the handsome youth as well, and refused to give him back to Aphrodite. Zeus declared that each goddess would get Adonis for four months of the year, with the remaining four months free for Adonis to spend how he liked. After he was killed in a hunting accident, Adonis was transformed into a flower, and the distraught Aphrodite commemorated her grief with a cult which incorporated the all-women festival called the Adonia. Hermes was the Greek god of trade, wealth, luck, fertility, animal husbandry, sleep, language, thieves, and travel. He's the trickster of the Olympians, and most recognisable is his position as the messenger to the gods. Well, mostly the messenger for Zeus. Along with being very clever and mischievous, Hermes is credited with the invention of the lyre, although he is not the god associated with music. On the first day of Hermes' life, he invented the lyre by killing a turtle and using its shell, stole the sacred cows of his half-brother Apollo, and killed two in sacrifice, before heading back to his bed. Apollo did not believe Hermes' innocent demeanour, and neither did their father, Zeus. Hermes returned the cows to Apollo and traded his lyre for a whip and the caducaeus, which became one of his most iconic symbols, along with his winged shoes. If you want to know more about Hermes, you can hit the link to our video all about the mischievous god. Our final of the 12 Olympians is Dionysus, who was the youngest of the 12 and was the god of wine, merriment and the theatre. He did not have the best start to life when his mother, Samil, died whilst still pregnant with him. Samil asked Zeus to show himself in all his godly splendour, a trick from Hera, and when Samil died from it, Zeus took the unborn Dionysus and reared him in his thigh. Dionysus is credited with giving the gift of wine to mortals, and was described by Homer as the joy of men. Although the depictions of Dionysus started with him being bearded, by the 5th and 4th centuries BCE, he was depicted as a beardless youth. When King Midas found the follower and drinking partner of Dionysus, Silenus, worse for wear after some heavy drinking, Midas gave him some food and returned him to the god. In thanks, Dionysus offered a reward to Midas, who promptly asked for the gift of having everything he touched turn to gold. This gift, unfortunately, included food and water. So, once Midas had almost starved to death, Dionysus told him he could reverse the gift by bathing in the Pactolus River, which explained the gold flecks found in the water. A special mention here will be for Hestia, the virgin goddess of the hearth, home, and hospitality. In her role as a protector of the family, she was often given sacrifices and offerings at the hearths of each private home. Hestia is one of the Twelve Olympians, but she's often traded out for Dionysus, and some myths say she voluntarily withdrew from any godly duties and affairs because she knew she would be welcome at any mortal city. One last special mention is to Hades, the brother of Zeus and Poseidon, and the one who drew the short straw and was allotted the underworld when the three gods divided up the world. Hades was the only god not to dwell on Mount Olympus, and had a helmet made by Hephaestus, which made the wearer invisible. As the god of the underworld, he was the most feared, and it was even considered bad luck to just say his name. He is best known from the story of his abduction of Persephone, who became the queen of the underworld, and stayed with Hades for half of the year, during which her mother Demeter mourned, nothing grew, and the skies were grey. This myth, of course, explained the changing of the seasons. 
Later Greek philosophers like Xenophanes and Plato criticised the depiction of the gods as unworthy. How do you feel about the antics of the Olympian gods? Which, if any, would you choose as your patron? Let us know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any new uploads. This video was brought to you by World History Encyclopedia. For more great articles and interactive content, head to our website via the link below. World History Encyclopedia is a non-profit organization, so if you'd like to support our work, you can hit the link in the top corner of the screen or you can visit our Patreon, which you can find the link to down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon with another video.